Okie Koki, it's Thursday the 18th of November 2021 and a warm welcome to the channel. This is being broadcast or released at 6.45 Thai time, 7.45 p.m. Hong Kong time, both in the evening time. And I would like to do a little bit of groveling and first of all thank you to all the YouTube members of my channel, thank you so much for your continued support and also for the people who support me on Patreon. And if you do want to do so, you can go to the home page, you can see the link and also you can see the link in the description below underneath the video if you're using a computer. I am not going to mention about buying a mug today. I'm giving that one a miss. I'm not going to mention it only costs $15 and I'm not going to mention buying a mug. Now, the headlines are quite massive for today, but there is a logical and good explanation for the reason why. Are you ready? Let's do it. China's Free Gorges Dam project. Whose damn business is it? Big question mark. The world's most disastrous dam ever built. Western taxpayers could have contributed to this study, feasibility study of the Free Gorges Dam. That is Canadian, British, and also American for a Chinese dam, $14 million worth. Now, here is the part that everyone loves, I'm going to read. And as some comments have said, I can't read. Yes, I know, but I'm going to give it a jolly good shot. Here we go. A great wall of secrecy stands around China's dam to mighty the Yangtze River and the largest hydroelectric complex in the world. The project's feasibility study, financed by the Canadian International Development Agency, an arm of the Canadian government, is now nearing completion. The study, which is off limits to the public, will be instrumental in deciding the fate of millions of people who live in the Yangtze Valley, one of the most fertile and agricultural river basins on earth. A Chinese environmental policy expert says that in the 1920s, the idea of the Free Gorges has intrigued planners, engineers, ideologists, visionaries and scoundrels alike, who have used it either to trumpet commitment to nationalistic ideals, assuage national pride, get rich and powerful, or strengthening competing government planning and energy bureaucracies when the autonomy and power were was threatened. A founder of the public first proposed the dam in the 1920s. Chinese nationalistic officials surveyed the dam in the 1940s with the help of the Bureau of Reclamation, a US federal dam building agency. Since the war, hundreds of technicians, engineers and scientists from over 300 agencies, institutes and universities have contributed to research and planning what is China's biggest construction project since the Great Wall. In 1984, enthusiasm of the scheme culminated in the US bureaus of reclamation signed a five-year agreement to provide technical and consulting services to the Yangtze River Valley Planning Office. In 1986, the Chinese accepted Canada's offer to finance the feasibility study of the Free Gorges, beating out the US Free Gorges Working Group, a high-powered consortium that included the US Military Arms Corps of Engineers, the U.S. Bureau of Reclamation, a American Consulting Engineers Council, Coopers and Librand, Merrill Lynch, Capital Marketers, Morgan Bank, and a host of others. A study, the study, nearly one year overdue, cost the CIDA over 14 million American dollars and was currently circulated by review of the World Bank funded panel of international experts, 
The consortium expected to hand over to the China's Ministry of Water Resources and Electric Power. The project must be approved by State Council, the highest power policy-making body in the National People's Congress. If approved, the Chinese government will use the document to secure international financing settled in motion to the next round of the Free Gorges contract. Better navigation in waterways upstream of the Free Gorges Dam also seemed unlikely due to the heavy siltation predicted by Chinese river transport authorities. The Yangtze is the third most silted laden river in the world. 70% of its silt would end up trapped in the dam's reservoir. The seriousness of the silt problem would demonstrate at China's Salmon Gorge project on the Yellow River. Plagued by slits, the dam now generates only 20% of its intended power capacity. For these reasons, and many other reasons, many scientists, engineers and environmentalists around the world would share the view of the Environmental Policy Institute by Washington, D.C. The Free Gorges Project could be the most disastrous dam ever built. Silt traps behind the dam would provide and deprive downstream floodplains and estuary fisheries and vital nutrients. These effects combined with reduced flows could cause an over, overall decline in agricultural and fisheries production, as the case of one dam in Egypt. Upstream, an estimated 80 species of fish would be wiped out of the dam's reservoir. Downstream, wetland habitat, habitat distributed and disrupted by the project could endanger both wildlife and fish populations. The weight of the Free Gorges Reservoir could tr trigger an earthquake in the area, high seismic activity. All these were considered. All arguments aside, the Chinese, Canadian and American governments posed a document that analyzes the feasibility of the Free Gorges Project, a perspective of dam builders and aid agencies. Western taxpayers have contributed to this study. One could radically change their lives of one million people. Without a proper public review in Canada, US and China, and the World Bank would send a clear message to citizens around the world that the Free Gorges Dam, even though paid by them, is none of their business. That was quite long indeed. Let's go and have a look at the weather for you. And to make it a bit more exciting, I haven't done this for a while, so why not? Let's do the musical weather. Here we go. And finally for today, let's have a look at the levels of the area of the Yangtze River, the Free Gorges Reservoir. At the bottom, we look at the dam and it is at 173.82. That's supposedly gone down with an outflow of 11,000, but inflow we don't know. And Kutan at the beginning of the reservoir is the same. According to the China Ministry of Water Resources on an unsecure website, of 174.11 and that really is about it for today thank you again to all my patreons thank you to all the memberships of the youtube channel again if you want to a little bit of groveling just go to the links below that can help you there again i'm not going to mention about the mug today that it's only 15 dollars and i'm not going to mention that it's all going to a very good cause and i'm not going to mention that you can just like uh, pay by PayPal. Not going to do it at all. 
No, just going to be a totally mug-free and advertising sponsorship-free day. <laughs> That's it. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Be good to each other. God bless.